Yo, what's up my Aboriginals? Hello everyone, Chief here. Welcome back to another Halo 4 gameplay commentary. As you can see by the title we're going to be talking about is Halo Dead. We're going to be talking about, you know, a little bit both sides of the argument. See what I can get into within the allotted time limit of this gameplay. Quickly addressing the gameplay here. Just say Carbine Regicide gameplay here. I don't always use the Carbine. It just happens to be that I got another gameplay that I wanted to share with you guys with the Carbine. Some Regicide here. Start off relatively okay. Rather shaky for the first game of the night, so to speak. It starts off great there, and then I just kind of get rough and messy and sloppy, and I make stupid decisions. But hey, I hope you guys don't mind the gameplay there. I actually get no regicide, so I believe I was the king the entire time. Or there was a brief moment in time where I wasn't the king, and I just didn't get the kill to get the regicide. So I thought that was kind of cool. So hope you don't mind the gameplay there. Obviously still a casual player out there. For any new people watching me, I'm no way as a competitive player. I always joke around saying that, yeah, sure, I could be uh, MLG Pro, low, low, low. But anyways, let's address the topic here. Um, Is Halo dead? And obviously, it's kind of hard not to address the elephant in the room. If you pop in Halo 4 right now, population numbers are extremely low. And I'm sure many of you guys have actually seen this graphic that's cir circulating out there on the interwebs. Provided by Raptor there, that gaming social media website that clogs your Twitter feed. Not a big fan of it, but some people do like it there. It's showing the population numbers in regards to the life cycle of Halo 4 in comparison to what Halo Reach was during their launch year. And it's showing that Halo 4's population as of right now is lower than Halo Reach's were, you know, at this point a year. You know, think about it this way. If both games were released, you know, at the same time, the population levels at this point in the year show that Halo Reach was pulling higher numbers than Halo 4 is currently right now at this point in time. And it's very disheartening to see that. Now, obviously, there are some faults. There's some other, you know, things that 3 for 3 could not control. But there's a lot of things. And I know a lot of people could, you know, spend days in the comments section down below so i do encourage you share your thoughts and reasonings why you think the population levels are so low in halo 4 are you still waiting for certain features or was it that you're just too you know you're tired of waiting even though some features did come and you just thought no nah, it, it wasn't enough to bring you back i know after bouncing around the internet trying to grab thoughts of the community out there and see what their reasonings were behind it i see a lot of mismatched things and a lot of people have said i just frankly didn't play halo 4 after the month it came out and it was kind of like oh well maybe you didn't give it a fair chance but granted if they didn't grasp you right away maybe they didn't do a good enough job so for example obviously csr I've always questioned its effectiveness. Coming out so late in April, how effective is it when it can only grab so many people from selective playlists with such low population numbers spread out in many playlists in Halo 4? There's at points, it's like, oh, there's only 300 people in this playlist. How effective is it right now at the CSR where it's supposed to match me with someone with similar level? It probably means there's bigger discrepancies between our skill level, and it doesn't seem like CSR may be doing a great enough job. But, you know, there's there's more things. A lot of people, you know, took a while to wait for a file share. Some people are still waiting for a race game type and probably are doubtful that it'll ever show up to Halo 4. Because almost at this point, I've kind of said, and it almost makes sense now, that Halo 4 has turned into a beta, more or less, for Halo 5. A sandbox for 343 to test the waters, try new things out to make Halo 5 potentially a better game at launch. And so, uh... I actually have a screenshot here of uh, the playlist numbers as of the midnight release West Coast time, Pacific Standard Time over in Canada there of my first multiplayer game on launch date. Granted, I did play multiplayer at PAX Prime, but, you know, I had a bit of an edge, so what? But I have a still of the population numbers within the playlists, and I'll just read them off here, and I'll put the image up on screen here. Infinity Slayer had 80,000 people. Big Team Infinity Slayer had 35,000 people. That's currently more, if not the same, than the overall population population that does occur daily now in Halo 4. A little bit sad that one playlist at launch now is larger than the, uh, the the overall population right now, which, you know, granted launch, obviously a lot of people are going to be pouring in. So just gives you an idea. It doesn't mean that much, obviously, because it is launched in comparison to now, but still quite a big plummet. Regicide to, you know, 4,000. Dominion, 6,000. Flood, 7,000. Capture the Flag, 7,000. Oddball at just uh, two, over 2,000. King of the Hill, just under 2,000 and Team Slayer Pro at 10,000. So a lot of people have thought maybe, you know, realignment of the playlists to concentrate the population to make CSR work better. I don't know. There's just so many things that maybe Halo 5 should do uh, differently. And, uh, you know, obviously leave some suggestions down below what you want to see. I'm interested in what you guys think. Try to have a civil conversation down below. 
And I always try to promote that there, you know, try not to be a keyboard warrior, but there's so many things. And granted, Halo is not in the same environment than it once was. Obviously, there's been a big gap, a big hiatus since a main Halo story game. With that, you know, like games like Call of Duty have been advertising and producing a game every year obviously drawing in more and more people. Halo just doesn't do that. They, they don't release yearly. They had a hiatus, so that's time where they don't advertise their game. And uh, if you haven't played it, come check it out. Seriously, Weapon Tuning made the game a lot better. I'm really enjoying it. But, so, you know, obviously Weapon Tuning is not enough for some people. And even, even going back to the environment stakes, if you look at what Halo 3 and Halo 2, those release years, there weren't too many other blockbusters around during that time. And frankly, my friends list right now is more popular populated with people watching Netflix and playing games right now and even then there's so many great games out there now in comparison to when Halo 3 came out. Halo 3 Halo 2 were titans in their release years and their years following. It just isn't the same environment for Halo right now. So what does 343 Industries need to do for Halo 5? Leave me your thoughts down below. I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. My name is Chief Landless and I'm signing out.